Hey, I'm Jared. I'm Nate. And we're getting married this summer. So we met through a mutual friend who introduced us in Boston in November 2008. My roommate, he had a picture of Jared, and so I thought he looked cute in the picture, but I just knew he was like this save the world type of guy. Save all the animals and make the world a peaceful place. Being somewhat cynical, I thought that was kind of cute. But then when I actually talked to him, I realized that he was legit. When I walked into our friend's apartment, Nate was kind of just sitting there hanging out, and it just instantly kind of liked him. He was really relaxed, grounded, which was sort of my first impression. A practical guy, adorable. So we, I think, hit it off. So far, we're going pretty so strong. Far, so good. Yeah. Yeah. Six, six years into it, like we just keep, we just keep hanging out. <laughs> it's just, it's we game. wake up every day and say, "Do you want to hang out again?" Yeah. yeah. Okay. okay. I guess we can do this. <laughs> I, I'm a city boy who always wanted to be in the country. Like I, from the time I was very young, knew I wanted to work with animals and loved animals and loved wildlife and nature. Jared was just a sweet kid. There was not an animal that this child didn't love. We lived in Manhattan, so we had a terrace. If a bird fell, he brought them up, tried to save it. He collected the bugs and tried to save them, watch them. So he was a combination of being shy but yet rambunctious like any kid probably. We're sort of big city people and Jewish and a little nuts. And Nate was from a smaller town and closer, bigger family. Hi. How are you? How are you? What's your name? Nathan Johnson. So I grew up in a small town called Potterville, Michigan. Uh, population less than 2,000, I think. It's kind of this sort of all-American, typical middle-class GM family. My my parents have been together for over 30 years. My grandparents have been together for almost 60 years. Nathan, well, he's my firstborn. He was a people pleaser, gentle and a gentleman. Aww. He had a soft, warm, loving heart. He was definitely an easy child to raise. Everything, you know, came easily to him, but if he didn't do it exactly right, he would be just you know, like, why don't I get this? When he was growing up, we had horses. Nathan Johnson, you're up. The horse would act up, and Nathan was like, I rode perfect, you know, and then his horse wasn't behaving that day, so it taught him everything didn't have to be perfect, and it was okay. We look at how Jared was raised, and enjoyed listening to him tell us stories about how, you know, he was raised and what he did in the, in the city. I was born between Manhattan and Queens, and lived there until I was about uh, 10 years old, and then moved to New Jersey. I grew up in a really loving family, but also a family that had its fair of challenges. My parents divorced when I was about 10. I sort of always dreamed of my parents marrying again, being back together, because that's what I thought would make everything perfect. Meeting Jared, instantly we loved his energy. We, you know, just such a nice young man. Passion that he had for everything that he believed in and what he was working on. And it, it's been so cool to see how different their lives were, but how they've been able to complement each other. I mean, I loved Nate the minute I met him, I thought, God, this guy is handsome and so nice. He's a keeper. I just thought Nate was very special, even at that first moment. Adored him. I felt they were very different. Jared's more outgoing. I just thought Nate was a little more low-key than my son. The good balance of two different personalities, yet they belong together. I mean, maybe we've both changed a little bit. We've grown up a little bit. We've we mellowed out a little bit. But a lot of our things that we liked about each other in the beginning are still there. You know, we share a lot of the same values that I think our parents share, and we kind of want similar things for ourselves and our children that a lot of people all around the country want. I mean, I think our gay lifestyle is pretty boring for the most part, which I think is the biggest surprise, you know? Like, the big gay agenda is going to Ikea and walking the dog. It's pretty much right. what we do on a daily basis. A few weeks before New Year's Eve, at the end of 2012, um, you know, we had at that point been together about four years, and I just had this idea that I wanted to propose, to propose to Nate at the Stonewall Inn in New York City, which we had never been to, but obviously heard a lot about. It isn't this, you know, it's where the essentially the modern LGBT pride started. He called me up and he said, "I'm going to propose to Nate." I said, "Oh my God!" I literally screamed, and I said, "We have the ring and all this," and we were laughing, exciting. I was crying. I think he was crying. He said, "I'm so nervous. I'm so scared." I said, "I said I'm so happy." It was just. I mean, I was thrilled beyond comprehension. 
like kind of unsure what was going on because he wanted us to go to this bar. It was more of this sort of like just random night into the stage. And, this, and then, well, then when he took me onto the stage, I kind of was like, okay, I think I know what's going to happen. <laughs> We've been together four years, and we four years. And, uh, you know, there's no one else who's been there for me. Made up some speech <laughs> to, to the strangers that were assembled and, and our friends, <laughs> and then just asked them to marry me. Nathan Johnson, will you, will you marry me? Because I want to spend the rest of my life with you. Right at midnight, it was like, oh, I'm tired, and we were like half asleep. Nathan called on the phone, and he said, Jared proposed to me. Happy New Year, Mom, you know, and Happy New Year, Dad. Oh, you too, you know, and so, and it was noisy and crazy, you know, on the phone call. I was so thrilled. I mean, and I got off the phone, was crying even more, because I cry a lot. But I just was so happy for him. Nathan Johnson and Jared Milrad. Nathan Johnson and Jared Milrad. The couple featured in Clinton's video. For Jared Milrad and Nathan Johnson, the internet stardom came quickly and unexpectedly. Hillary Clinton launched her presidential campaign on Twitter with a video featuring the two men. I'm getting married this summer to someone I really care about. When we saw ourselves like holding hands in the campaign video saying that, you know, you were going to marry this, the person that you love. It was just overwhelming, but very positive and exciting. Nate and Jared, thank you guys so much for joining me. What a day! What a and we just kind of looked at each other, <laughs> like a few moments before, you know, in the silence before the interview started. Just like, you know, why, why are we here? <laughs> How did this happen? What did you think you were filming when you filmed it? <laughs> well, we we did know that it was for a Hillary video, uh, and one of our friends had invited uh, invited us to participate given that we were about to undergo, undergo a big life change. We were ultimately in, I think, about 10 on-air interviews, and then we were in about several dozen national, international print media. My phones were blowing up, you know, they were, oh my gosh, that's so cool, you know. They're definitely blazing the trail. That's what I'm proud of. Both are confident in themselves that they feel like they can speak out to other people. Being who you are is a good thing, right? It's not it's yeah. not a negative. You know, being being gay, being open, being LGBT, whoever you are, whatever you identify as, that's a good thing. We are very similar to other couples in a straight relationship, in a in a multicultural relationship, in a in an interfaith relationship. It's more more about love and commitment and communication, fighting through everyday struggles than it is about us being gay. I hope that we, we grow together, that we see the world together. I think we both love traveling. Um, I think we both want to make a huge difference in the world. I hope that, that we get to have this long, committed relationship and we can look back on our family uh, and I get to, to just enjoy that and, and maybe tell some really lame jokes to my kids and grandkids. This is one of the ha happiest occasions of my life. They're saying in front of everybody, the law, their, their family, their, we, we have this right, we're just like you, we have this right to be together and to love one another and we wish to be married, to be part of the community and to be recognized as such. And that to me is going to cry, but a beautiful thing. And I would say to them, congratulations for finding somebody that you can grow old with and be with. Congratulations to both of you. We're so proud of who you boys are and what you represent, and we, we wouldn't change you for the world. We just absolutely love you. Here comes the tears. Hi, Jared, mate. Congratulations to my beloved son, Jared, and his wonderful partner, Nate. We hope you have a fabulous day. Congratulations. Congratulations on your wedding. Congratulations. I wish you all the very best. I wish you guys nothing but the best. Congratulations on your special day. We, we love, love you. you. I love you. Woo! Mwah. We're at my pre-wedding barbecue. Some night before my wedding, had a bunch of uh, family and friends over. It's a lot going on tomorrow, so hoping everything works out. We have T minus 14 hours until the wedding. I am most excited to walk down the aisle, look at Jared, smile, and see all of my friends and family staring back at us.
hopefully smiling. <laughs> we have this special union, this ability to express this freedom to marry, this freedom to love openly for the first time in American history. And we want our ceremony tomorrow and our, and our reception to symbolize that hopefulness and that optimism about the future. It's great just to see them, they love each other, they join in marriage um, and be happy for one another. I'm happy for them. I hope the, the Upo stays up now. <laughs> The Hoopa. How do you pronounce that? Hoopa. We're going to stand on the Hoopa uh, at 11 a.m. at Montrose Harbor in the park. We're looking the beautiful Chicago skyline with Lake Michigan in the forefront. Sounds of joy and happiness are you, O oh God, who causes these two loving rooms to rejoice together. It's now the time in our service that I ask both of you to share the words you'd like to share. The first moment I held your hands in mine, I cheered. I promise to be a better husband tomorrow than I am today. To stand by you, love you, and hold you near. And I promise to be yours, today and every day, until my last breath and beyond. Jared, I pledge to be true to you and to respect you. I promise to be honest and let you know when your jokes aren't funny. I promise to be with you until the very end because you are my best friend my soulmate, and my one true love. You are now husband and husband in the sight of God, the Jewish community, the state of Illinois, and all people. <laughs> Mazel tov! It was before which state can we get married in? Now they can go to even Alaska and Sarah Palin will marry them. That would be wonderful. So we're really happy. It's been awesome to see him be able to find somebody that he loves and to be able to just be happy like everybody else. The fact that we can now get married at the time that we're ready to get married and just a few weeks ago the whole country can now marry whomever they choose is just amazing. There's folks in Mississippi that are getting their marriage licenses or getting married at the same time we are and like that that didn't wasn't able to happen like for a month ago. Best wishes to both of you and I'm sure you'll find success in whatever state, country, or planet. I know Pluto's not a planet anymore. <laughs> Thanks for all. Everybody traveled so far to get here. We really appreciate it. But I'm also very happy for society in general to recognize gay partnerships across America now. They had so many people here that love them and traveled from all over the world and it's just an incredible thing to, to feel that love. The happiness that they are able to project between them, between their families, between their friends. Last weekend we got married. Yeah, we got married. I think that it's, it's just so great that people are viewing us as a normal couple who get married just like everybody else. Yeah, and little by little uh, people are just not gonna like have to do this kind of videos, documentaries. It, it's, it won't be something interesting that makes us, that makes us different from everybody else. Everyone's so happy and joyous and there's a lot, there was lots of tears and laughter and just warmth. Uh, dancing with our parents and grandparents and seeing my grandpa dance with you. <laughs> like, uh, we, have, we have all these friends and family from different chapters in our lives, like college and high school. I mean, it's just people like that that are come that have come to celebrate with us and celebrate this joy we feel. Um, just, I don't know, it's almost indescribable. It means just so much to us. Yeah. It's crazy that we like have these yeah. rings on and are actually like husbands now. I can yeah. call you my husband. It's an interesting ring to it now. 